Welcome to the Growing Gorillas podcast. I'm Kisa Davison. And I'm Travis Davison. And this podcast is all about parenting. The ups, the downs. The in-betweens. We have absolutely no idea what we're doing. But likely neither do you. So kick back, relax, and enjoy. Special thank you to the Cleared Hot podcast for use of the studio and Andy Stump for all of his invaluable information. If you'd like to learn more about Cleared Hot, visit cleareredhotpodcast.com. Let's do this. Drink Element LMNT is our podcast sponsor today. It's a healthy alternative to sugary electrolyte drinks. Every grab and go stick pack replaces all the essential electrolytes that you need with no sugar, no coloring, no artificial ingredients or any other junk. I drink Element every day and so does Travis to support- Because it's delicious. Well, I was gonna say, I drink it to support my hydration I would say my low carb diet, my fast, my workouts, et cetera, but none of those things are true. <laughs> I just drink it because it's good and I need water in the morning. My favorite flavor is definitely the orange one and the green one and the pink one. Yes, you're saying raspberry, orange, and lime. Correct. Which I don't disagree with you on. However, the watermelon is delicious. And let's not forget the chili and lime is good with tequila as is the habanero mango, I think. The two spicy ones are really good with tequila. Not recommended in the morning, but still good with tequila. Well, yeah, and it's kind of like, I guess, counterbalances. Totally. I don't know. It's I don't, a math equation. It works I don't, out somehow. I don't think Rob Wolf necessarily is going to stand behind that. I know, but he's not here, so. That's true. I'm the official on the subject. But listen, here's the cool part. As a member of our Growing Gorillas community, Element has a very, very, very cool offer for you. You can let um, let them know that you are interested in trying out a sample pack. All you have to do is cover the cost of shipping so you can get yours. Which is what, like five bucks? I don't know. I, I don't think it's like five bucks. Anyways. I just charge things on my credit card. I don't look at it. Cheap. Cheap. So here's the URL. Drink lmnt.com slash growing gorillas. Now remember, growing gorillas, you have to spell all the way out and there's two G's right in the middle, so don't screw it up. Drinkelement.com slash growing gorillas. And in the words of Stella Davison, hydrate or dihydrate. I feel like Element should adopt that as their new tagline. Well, they just, they just did. Okay. Welcome to this week's episode of the Growing Gorillas podcast. This week, we have a really sweet conversation with our favorite daughter, Stella Jane Davison. She is my favorite daughter by far. She's my favorite daughter as well. So, Stella's an amazing human being. Period. Grew up in the gym. Actually, her and her three brothers are the uh, inspiration for the Growing Gorillas Kids program. It's true. And ultimately the inspiration for this podcast. And probably the glue that has kept us together over the course of the last 22 plus years. Yes. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> oh. So Stella, if you don't know Stella, you should. Um, and you'll get to know her a little bit more in this podcast. She trains currently in Rhode Island with Mayo Quanchi and Sensei Serge Boisu and Sensei Liz Boisu as well. Um, she is an Olympic hopeful, at least in our minds, she's an Olympic hopeful. Yeah, and she won a national championship. She did win a national championship. She's, she's a brown belt in jujitsu, a black belt in judo. She's a phenomenal kids coach. I feel like you should tell people that she's actually a black belt in jujitsu because by the time this podcast is released, she will be a black belt in jujitsu. That's true. No so, one knows she's getting her black belt in like a week. Yeah. And she's only 19. So she will actually be the youngest, I think in the entire organization. Uh, also the funniest. And her twin brother will also be receiving his at the same time. Technically, Ricky will be the youngest because he was born 15 minutes after her. Anyway, Stella is a phenomenal athlete, a phenomenal human being. She's a fantastic coach. She is our favorite daughter. She's beautiful. She's smart. She's funny. She's very organized, almost to a fault. And she leaves cabinet doors open. And then when she closes them, she slams them. 
Correct. And occasionally she breaks down. She does break down. And she also breaks dishes a lot. But we still love her. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, Stella. Yes. <laughs> you are my favorite daughter. Did you know that? No way. Jury's still out for me, but uh, she's pretty decent. That's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, there's a lot of people in this world who think that you're pretty awesome. We try to keep kind of the truth under wraps, that you're even more awesome than what other people think of you. But the main reason that I wanted us to get together was, well, twofold, really. Number one, on Tuesday, which is just how many days from now? Four. Who's counting? Uh, that's not t- true. Tomorrow's Sunday, Monday. T- it's three days. Yeah, but I get there at midnight. But you leave. Okay, that's true. Oh, gosh. Oh, no, Logistics. <laughs> This is kind of, I mean, it's a kind of a big deal. This is a big milestone, right? You're flying the coop, but you're not only flying the coop, you're flying the coop to go do what you've dreamed of doing for so long. Um, so that's one reason that I wanted us to get together. The second reason is that I need to, people think for whatever reason, and I don't know, maybe this is true. Maybe we should take credit where credit is due. But what I keep hearing from people is, oh my gosh, you and Travis have done such a great job with your kids. What wonderful parents you are. And I feel a little bit like a fraud because I have no, and I have never had any fucking idea. Oops, hey, sorry. That was inappropriate. Sorry. I have never had any clue what what to do. Like the, this whole parenting thing is... For, and, fortunately, I was there to kind of pick up the pieces, <laughs> and um, I don't know if you guys remember that mo- that like Mr. Mom movie. Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, did you know your dad cleans house now? Mom, he's always done that. <laughs> hey, people can't see that you guys winked at each other. What are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> Clearly, I, I'm not there's following. a conspiracy going mm. on here. So, anyways, back to me and how great I am. <laughs> No, I, I know what you're saying, and, uh, you know, we get it. I mean, obviously, Stella's here, and we're talking about Stella, but it, it comes up <coughs> with the other kids, too, and um, I kind of have the same response that you do, which is, really? I didn't, I didn't do that. Really? <laughs> she was just born like that. I don't know. Yeah, so we must have done something. There's four of them, and we, you know, they're they're all great kids. Well. Stop it. My brothers are all angels. <laughs> <laughs> I really tried super hard not to laugh. Ricky, Joe, and Ted, I love you. <laughs> Mama loves you too, babies. Stella doesn't. Yes, I do. I have a favorite older brother. I have a favorite twin brother. That's actually my favorite thing. And you a favorite t- younger you, brother. Someone asked you, actually it was when we were in Morocco, someone said, oh, do you have any siblings and you said i don't have any sisters but i have brothers wasn't that morocco people ask and they said older or younger and you said one of each older younger and a twin i say all of the above (laughs) that's kind of cool so maybe it was that that made her great and not us the fact that she the fact that we provided her with an older brother a younger brother and a twin brother yeah the twin was the harder one like we could kind of control the older and the younger but we had to work hard to get the twin. Well, like we've always told the children, only one of them was planned, and it was one of the twins. We just don't know which one. It well, was clearly me. Stella came out first, so I'm kind of on her side with that one. Thank you. And ba- baby A. Remember that uh, the baby book Mima made? Mm-hmm. Okay, if you look at all the pictures of me and Ricky next to each other, he's got his eyes wide open I know. as if he's surprised too that he's here. <laughs> <laughs> That's an And I'm just point. sitting there. Right where I belong. Right. <laughs> An excellent point. So. They, they were womb mates. 
you guys and your puns. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been studying your pun book I gave you? Other than having Stella teach the three and four year olds. Oh my goodness. The thing I'm going to miss most is her awful puns. <gasps> Are they awful? That is the They're wrong. They're awfully good. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, so that is one thing I also wanted to talk about is I'd like to hear you give your father advice on how to deal with three and four-year-olds in the Micro Monkeys class. Because all three and four-year-olds are borderline feral anyway. But then it seems like you have a group, you are you are granting your father a group of relatively... Mm, shall we say diverse <laughs> diverse and interesting unique. children unique they're all precious entertaining snowflakes love them all so I'd like to hear I'm just going to run through an agenda real quick this is like a to-do oh list for gosh, today I love plans remember less. <laughs> remember the whiteboards that you grew up with um I have three in my room the <laughs> right chore boards are a good thing uh so we need to talk about the fact that you're flying the coop and what is that? Steve Whittier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you know Steve is only like an hour and a half from where I'll be living? Yeah. Yeah, I'm making a list of all of the dangerous people that I know oh, that are okay. closer to you than I will be. And I'm creating a Rolodex. <laughs> <laughs> I it's don't a know what that is. It's a phone tree, basically. Do you know what a phone tree is? Yeah, 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 totally. You would love it. It's <laughs> super cool. You can flip through it. You would actually really like Rolodexes. I'm, I feel a little bad that you don't know what that is because you have an iPhone. Hmm. Okay, so back to my agenda. I'd like to talk about the Micro Monkeys transition. I'd like to talk about the fact that you're flying the coop and what your big dreams and aspirations are for how you think you're possibly going to live without us in your daily life. And I'd also like to ask you what it was about your upbringing that you thought was helpful, thought was unhelpful, and what you're going to do differently with your own children. That's my agenda. Andy needs a whiteboard in this room. He needs several. Let's buy him one. Okay. We, we can just hang it right there. All right, I'm going to start the clock. Go. Okay. Item number one, Stella. Micro monkeys. Tell your dad what to do with those micro monkeys. Honestly, they <laughs> love him already so much. If they see his little head peep through the door, all of their eyes just go over there and like, oh, Coach Travis. <laughs> and they like try to stand up to go see him or like run. I'm like sit back down. Um, all I thought about when she said when they see his little head pop up <laughs> is blinded by the light. <laughs> That's only when you have a fresh shave. Well, my forehead's pretty much bald all the time. Mm -mm. No, they really do love Coach Travis. And even before um, mm -mm. before this move was um, established, anytime he would walk by the door, I made it very clear that Coach Travis was an important person. And when he would bring puppy Hank in, we would go visit him. It's like they need to see Coach Travis always. He's an icon. Kids love puppies. Yep. And big, bearded, bald men with tattoos on their hands. Right. Some of them do draw on their hands, which That's may, not be the, may not be the best influence on. Oh, I know. What were, uh, who are the two boys that? The, it was the Jimenez boys. Oh, Shiloh's yeah, the Jimenez sons. boys. Conan, Mikhail. They both had hold fast on their hands. Yeah, so cute. Remember when Baby Joe dressed up his dad for one of his... Uh, Halloween dances. He was really mad at you when he wanted his hair cut. Just like dad. Air quotes, cut, as <laughs> right. in shave to the scalp, like dad. And you no, no, no. You couldn't do the little island for him. He had a <laughs> mental breakdown. He was like, I want the island. <laughs> Grass doesn't grow on a busy highway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyways, Stella, anyways. best advice. Give your like top three rules for managing three and four-year-olds in a jujitsu classroom for your dad. Go. You have to keep them moving. They can sit still for like four seconds. Tops. <laughs> Overestimate. Keep going. Yeah. Um, they really like um, feeling like they're picking something 
or that they're in charge. So if you give them different responsibilities or jobs, they love that. Give an example. So, okay, but you have to be very careful. This is a fine line to walk because if you let them all pick their own color of dot to stand on, then you have like five mental breakdowns because they all wanted the shiny purple dot. But if instead you already pick the colors for them, but you give them the job of setting the dot down and standing on it. So you'll say, for example, um, baby Stella, do you want to put your red dot down or do you want me to put your red dot down? Exactly. Just mm, like that. That sounds familiar. Or, or you make it sound like it's a really difficult task. You're like, oh man, are you strong enough to hold this dot? <laughs> I don't know. That all sounds really great, <laughs> but... I would like to rewind the clock to a week ago <laughs> when I was assisting you in Micro Monkeys in preparation for taking over Micro Monkeys when one kid, I won't say his name, but his initials are Oscar, <laughs> threw his green dot into the air and it conveniently slid behind the wall pads forever to be lost. That's true. It's gone forever. Yeah, so... so some students... Ava and Stephanie, we need to order another green dot. Well, we already have several backups. <laughs> well, we're down one green dot. <laughs> Sometimes they get to stand next to their dot. <laughs> or they have to hold it down with their feet. And they need to constantly be reminded what their job is. Basically, you're like the federal government, where you just make up arbitrary rules that people have to follow, and they get wrapped up in the following of the rules, and it keeps them occupied yeah. And obedient. Is that what I'm hearing from yeah. you? Yeah. They really like when they get to be creative, too. So instead of reminding them that we walk back to the wall instead of running, you can make them walk like different animals. Sometimes like penguins holding eggs? I have them walk like penguins, <laughs> and then I individually hand them invisible eggs and make sure that they don't drop them. And sometimes they hand them back to me. <laughs> So they'll get back to the wall and then they're like, oh, it's still here. And I'm like, nice work. You did it. I'm like, here's a really big one. Okay, the, other day, the other day when I was assisting you, you told them to walk like they were walking through mud. Yes. So you have to be really creative and then they get to use their imagination too. That's excellent advice. Thank you. They're Not that their imaginations friends. need any help. No, they you. don't. But if you give them some direction then it's like they're actually in an imaginative box. <laughs> okay, so I I have a question that actually bridges over to spider monkeys. How do you deal in a group instruction situation where children are touching each other with their hands? What happens when somebody puts their finger up their nose? <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, my students would never do that. That's disgusting. <laughs> Lies. <laughs> do your students do that? Well, only one in particular, whose initials are Duke. Mostly it's my adult students, but... <laughs> you, like, look over at your, like, 30-some-year-old men, you're like, we don't put fingers in our nose. <laughs> like, Up to the ring. There was a Shel Silverstein poem about that in um, Where the, where the Sidewalk, sidewalk Ends. ends. About putting your finger up your nose. I should find that and read it to the kids. That is a great idea. I'm so smart. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't, well, I haven't caught Stella, them doing it lately, so. Don't they worry about the boogie monster? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Try, trying to get all the puns I can. Oh, it's my Lord. last chance. I can tell he's been saving them up, too. He's just oh, waiting for the oh, perfect time. I'm snot kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so are you kidding? You thought it was a booger, but it's not. <laughs> You really, none of those micro monkeys put their finger up their nose? No, we used to have wall lickers and occasionally. Hazy Grace. We get toe eaters. But mm, those are the worst, toe eaters. Or they take their string of their pants. I was just going to say that. That drives me crazy. Or they chew on the edge of their sleeve and their collar. Yeah, when they do the pants thing, I will retie their pants for them. Do, what about kids who put all four of their fingers in their mouth and suck on them? Mom, it sounds like your students are very unhygienic. <laughs> you know what? They, I coach they don't, whitefish. They, I was okay. gonna, put some sanitizer <laughs> on their hands first, and then they'll put it in their mouth. But <laughs> a good Kids idea. in Kalispell don't put their fingers in their mouth. Yeah, yeah. whitefish, different breed. <laughs> they chew on their strings a lot, though. Yeah. That's fascinating. 
Mm. I give them something else to do. So if they're trying to chew or they're trying to like pick or do something else gross, I have them hold on to their collars, <coughs> their gis or their sleeves. Okay. And I make sure to use those words sleeve and collar repeatedly so that they start to learn them or maybe their belt and I have them think about what it feels like. So instead of chewing on their gi or chewing on their hands, they're like, oh, this collar is really difficult to squeeze or it's cold or it's rough. So they think about. That's actually quite brilliant because most of the time when kids are chewing on, when they're chewing, they want that's a sensory do. integration issue. Yeah. And they they need to feel things. They yeah. need to have sensory input. So, so. I have everyone grab So collars. you're really smart. <laughs> no. Is this where you say, you lean into your microphone and you say, she got that from me? I was actually going to say that she reminds me a lot of her mother. She's very beautiful. <laughs> Somebody's trying to get in my pants. Stella. Smart. Inappropriate. Sorry. Inappropriate. <laughs> no, so I have lots of little tricks, but. How much money would it take to keep you from moving to Rhode <laughs> Island? One million minimum. Over, say, the next 50 years? Can you get me, can you get me a world champion title? Don't you have that already? I'm no. I'm the man most likely to be able to get you a world championship title. Yeah, the only problem is you don't know how to do judo. <laughs> <laughs> Slight problem. <laughs> He's a jujitsu master. <laughs> he, but um What judo you know? <laughs> that was close. Close. Man, I'm not judo, gonna give that one no, to you. No, you'd have to say you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. I got to work on my pun game. <laughs> okay. Any more advice for your father taking over the micro monkeys? <coughs> you have to remind yourself that they're kids. <laughs> have to remind yourself your kids. You're standing in front of them and you're like, yes, they're tiny humans, but they've only been on this planet for like four years. Or in some cases, three. Three. If, hey, if they're potty they, trained, they can be on the mats. They barely learned how to pee in a toilet. Exactly. And now you're expecting them to do so yeah, many things. You have to have very low expectations. Jiu-jitsu, they can learn eventually. Right now, being on the mats, they're learning how to interact with other children without feeling the need to bite them. <laughs> <laughs> or how to stand in line without shoving the person in front of them or spinning in circles. They're learning basic learning skills so that down the road they can learn jujitsu. But right now, they're learning their bodies and only the one that's their own, not the person next to them. Yeah, you actually bring up a good point because I think sometimes as jujitsu coaches, we come into those 45 minute micro monkey classes and we worry like what the parents are thinking, like when they're watching it on the, on the, the television. Um, because you're in there and you're like, man, I wonder if the parents are, are like upset. Like, do they expect us to be teaching their kids like flying arm bars right now? And, <laughs> exactly. Um, but the funny thing is, is I don't think I've ever had or heard of one of our uh, micro monkey parents ever coming up to one of our coaches and say, man, you guys just play a lot of games in there and you guys do a lot of storytelling. And, you know, I, I, I want my kid to learn more jujitsu. No, I've never heard that ever. Mm -mm. They The kids come back on their little train. You have to use trains. I meant to say that too. So um, <clears throat> whenever we're going to and from the room, you need multiple chains of micro monkeys holding each other's belts. What does that mean, multiple chains? Not just one okay, long train? Do, <laughs> no, because they can't keep it together. If you do one long train, they will crash and burn, and they will cry because they hit their heads. or Because <laughs> their heads are large. Exactly. So you have to have multiple trains and you got to pick a good line leader, not who wants to be line leader, but who is going to walk at micro monkey speed, not like the flash. And then the rest of the train falls off. So make sure you use your trains. Why am I talking about that? Oh, because they come back f to the lobby on their little train and mom and dad see them or whoever's picking them up and they don't ask like, what did you learn today? They're just proud that, oh, hey, today little Jimmy didn't punch his training partners that's a win <laughs> yeah well i've even noticed too like you know i think the last couple of classes that we've taught together there's been about 13 three and four year olds in yeah. the class 13 does yeah. everyone out here 
Yeah, that's enough to if they all wanted to tackle you. That's Lord of the Flies material. They could take you. Well, down. I mean, I don't know if you guys ever read Gulliver's Travels, but that's my biggest mm-hmm. fear. Like that's my PTSD. <laughs> the Lilliputians. I just feel like if they were smart enough to organize, that they would totally. All it takes so, is one. No, that's why we don't do hugs during class. If they want to hug you before and after class, I'm okay with that. But if you <laughs> kneel during- next to a wall of micro monkeys and one of them runs over to you and hugs you you need to stand up immediately because the next thing you know there will be seven on you that's happened to me before so don't do that yep always pull them away from the wall and tie their belt and then put them back on the wall otherwise you get ambushed (laughs) i could see that yeah Mm -hmm. i feel like these are all really good pieces of advice for parents at home dealing with three and four year olds as well well, well, I was, what, don't what I was going to say is, is uh, <laughs> I mean, sometimes like Maybe. a birthday party. Yeah, that's true. So we've had like 13 on average, I think. That's a lot. And what I've noticed too. is if we have 13 or when Stella was Do gone. Do they all speak English? Um, or the, yeah. Some, all, some all of them they're do. There, of there are a couple currently that are still developing their speech it's english that they're 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 attempting english i can they're imitating well. something that closely resembles english but it's not quite there yeah. yet and if so you are you repeating back to them what they're saying to yes. you and if you still don't understand so i will repeat it back and then they're like they look at me and they're like no uh koshtawa that is not what i said <laughs> then you just nod and you're like oh really and they're like "Mm -hmm." (laughs) mm-hmm after like three tries if I still don't understand I'm like no way and they and they just nod and they're like yep (laughs) I just quickly point out the window go squirrel and then (laughs) all bets are off (laughs) see that works too they're really like a separate species oh they're fantastic so adorable I love how fat they are too well what's crazy is is (laughs) I watched them go from three to four to spiders to chimps like some of them now i mean 13 years at uh the gym it, it's like a lot of a lot of them are like teenagers and stuff now so it's kind of crazy when you're looking at them i mean i saw hazy just had her seventh birthday and i'm like how could she be seven like she was, she just, was just licking, licking walls. the wall yesterday <laughs> just the other day <laughs> and uh. not that she's not licking walls now i'm sure she still no. is she upgraded to people i heard <laughs> <laughs> but She's no. one of my spider monkeys up oh. in Whitefish. I have a stuffed animal of hers, by the way. Oh. She, I think she purposely left it with me so then <sighs> she would have to visit me again. Mm. That's what her mom tells me. <laughs> but one of the, the uh, back to the, you know, what, what are parents' expectations if they're paying money for a three or four year old to come to the gym to learn jujitsu? Yeah. And really, I think just like with the adults, yes. The, the martial art itself is the product, but the byproduct of learning the martial art ends up being more invaluable than the actual skill set itself. And so with those 13 kids, uh, I've noticed like some of them, it's just an accomplishment if they can make it from the lobby to the room without crying or without having to have their mom or dad yeah. walk yeah. them For all the sure. way back Baby to the room. steps. A lot of them have separation anxiety a little bit too. So that's the other time where it's really important to give them a job. Sometimes I'll have them hold my clipboard back to the room so that they have something to think about rather than I'm, I'm leaving never, my mother. I'm never going to see my mom ever again. <laughs> They're like, oh my gosh, I, I have to hold this. I have to bring it back there for Coach Stella. So they like jobs. I feel like it helps a lot that. that you smile at them, not just with your with your mouth, but you smile at them with your eyes and with your voice. Oh, that's my favorite. What about growling? Because when Stella was gone for that month, <laughs> I would just kind of, some of the kids, I would just growl a little bit, but I would show my teeth. So it might have been misinterpreted as a smile. Is that, Stella, should I continue with that? No, or? maybe. Mm, so I think rethink probably that. if you growl at them, they're going to start to growl back. <laughs> <laughs> and that sounds, That's an excellent point, Stella. Yeah. Monkey sees as monkey does. They will copy you exactly. And monkey does as monkey sees. I don't know. One of the, you know, having been the, the spider monkeys coach, I get it like, like Adeline, for example, was not she that was, long ago. She was one of your micro monkeys. And yeah. then. Um, 
So I kind of see them. Adeline, six pieces of pizza, Adeline? Yeah. Okay. Um, it, pretty much all of the <clears throat> spider monkeys um, have come up through the micro monkeys program. So I, I guess another benefit that, you know, from the parents' perspective is when I get one of Stella's kids that graduates up into the five and six year olds, mm -hmm. um, they've kind of already learned all of the um, discipline I as far as being Etiquette. able to stand at attention yeah. and being able to, you know, leave their parents' side without crying about it every time. So it definitely makes the transition as they get into the age groups where they can actually start to focus a little bit more on the technical For sure. uh, skills that we're trying to teach them. I find it a lot easier to work with a five or six year old who spent maybe a year in the micro monkeys mm -hmm. um, than if I just have somebody who at five or six for the first time is being asked to be in a classroom environment. For sure, you know? well, that's, I mean, that's the benefit of going to a preschool. Remember the co-op preschool that you went to? Yes. I remember blue, uh, purple and green for some reason. Were the rooms purple and green? Yes. Because those are remember the colors Miss I Remember Miss Linda and Miss yeah. I'm pretty Latanzi. Sure Miss was Latanzi. Rosa not there? Was it John? No, that was the Montessori. Oh. You, I don't think you remember Montessori. You were very tiny. Was that when we moved to Montana? No, that no. was in Washington. That was in Washington. Oh. No. You did Montessori, and then you had the co-op with Bailey. Yeah. That was all of the cousins. All the cousins were together. And Auntie and I remodeled Sir. the bathroom and took over the board and did the auction. And I described those first years of my life as I had two moms. <laughs> it still has sometimes, two moms. Sometimes, I told you, Mr. Mom over here. Well, Auntie mm. Emily would pick us up. No, no, no. Let's not talk about her. <laughs> her two moms were me and your sister. Uh, well, I'm devastated then. Well, you put money in the bank account. Remember it was we, cool. We would walk across the street and go visit Uncle, too, and he had his dog. Sometimes. Max. Yeah. The, and sometimes we dog? would get to give him treats. Mm -hmm. Most of the time we wouldn't because we'd get <laughs> we'd get a little nibble. He would bite you? Well, on accident, I think. Joe's might not have been an accident. But Dogs <laughs> are a really good judge of characters. <laughs> and you and Bailey were characters. <coughs> I think you mean we are characters and it's the main character actually <laughs> you're absolutely right though back to the important part of this conversation that was a fun part of the conversation but that micro monkeys is really training for spider monkeys which is training for yeah. chimps which is training for juniors which is training for teens which is training for adulthood no they're learning how to be a learner yeah one of my favorite tactics with the spider monkeys is how old are you i'm six okay well <laughs> That means you're practicing to be seven, right? What does a seven-year-old act like? Okay, well, then that's what you need to do right now. Coach Kisa, I don't know. I'm not seven. <laughs> <laughs> See, my, yeah, my kids aren't that smart. <laughs> so I don't use age with the kids because they'll get really confused, partly because I tell them all I'm 87. I tell them all I'm 29. <laughs> oh. See, I tell them I'm Which is my favorite because then they're like, oh, my mom's older than you. I'm like, I know. Make sure you tell her that. <laughs> <laughs> well. I'm 87, if anyone asks. Okay. Hmm. It's weird because your mom's 29. <laughs> oh, yeah. Super weird. <laughs> Math. Why bother? Uh, any other advice you want to give your dad on taking over three- and four-year-olds? Don't let them pick their own stamps. <gasps> it takes too long. The assistants try to do that sometimes. You pick the stamp and the color, yeah. and then you can have the assistants walk around and hand them out. What I do with the spiders is I never let them pick their own stamps, like you said, because yeah. you're absolutely right. Too many options. You don't I, do you do stamps with spiders? Oh yeah, yeah. that's why uh, they love what on they God's green earth. It. What do you call? It? Are you in leadership? You do stamps? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and that's why they love me. I mean, I I give them. Uh, yeah, he's the stamp man. Yeah. <laughs> Kate. I give the people what they need, and um, we have to do better and more than what Kalispell does. But what I do, because I'm always luck. I'm always looking for incentives for good behavior. Yep. And so what I do, and, and everyone in, in the spiders knows this, is at the end of class when they line up for stamps, I say, okay, today um, Tatum gets to pick the color 
of the stamp because, and I, I give an example of what she did well in class. I feel yes. like Tatum should pick the color of the stamp every day. No. Um, <laughs> and then and then after she says, oh, I want purple. And I'm like, okay, it's purple stamp today. Then I say, Ava, what stamp are we going to do today? And then I bring her the tray of stamps and then she gets to pick the stamp. But everybody gets the same color and the same stamp. Yeah. But they know... That so it's like your student of the day, move of the day. Exactly. He does Only that for cooler because team. the stamp lasts. I can't believe you're doing you... stamps and leadership, and I never knew that. Sometimes I do stickers. So I've done that. Oh, yeah. We're all a lot of stickers. What? Um, we do stickers, too. I've done the micro monkeys where they pick the color or pick the stamp based on, like, I'm again, failing. give them examples, but they're too young to really understand it. It just takes too long. I'm failing. And because then they go, well, I want green and red. I'm like, well, actually. I've noticed some of the assistants, too. I mean, I roughed them up, and this doesn't happen anymore. But when I was covering for you, I'd look over, and of course the kid's going to say, oh, I want one on both hands, or put one on my forehead, or I, I need two on my cheeks oh, and no, one on no, my no. nose. We put them on our hands and uh, our hands only. Yeah, and uh, they're limited to one. They can pick the hand. They all get one stamp. If they ask me very nicely and they say please then i will let them put it on their own hand with tatum that would be a big risk have you seen your mom's office <laughs> um she's an artist actually she is an artist. Uh, we call that a graffiti artist <laughs> <laughs> she's borderline terrorist i also drew on mom's board at her office I, that's true it still says poopy words. Tatum didn't draw on the board she drew on the wall that was that the an board accident was hanging on remember when ted drew poop man um, like <laughs> poop ma'am installation up That's and down so our stairwell That's in not Camus. only do I remember I still have twice we painted over it and then he vivid dreams um, I guess they're called nightmares nightmares yeah poop man and there was that lovely monster on the backseat of your minivan that's true so many wonderful memories um, okay how funny that none of us are actually good at art <laughs> you're speak for yourself at art. well you are you're not a child oh we're talking about our kids right now. I was going to say, usually the conversation goes, you are a child. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> or more like, stop being such a child. Why are you such a toddler? Um, okay, so so I feel like you should check in with your dad like on a weekly basis. Um, actually, we talk to each other every day. You won't need to because I downloaded software onto your phone, so it's all good. Where is my phone? <laughs> Funny. I put it back somewhere where you would find it. Mm. Mm. Weird. Well, considering I misplace it all the time, that's going to be a fun little scavenger hunt. Well, I've also got a tracking device on it. So okay, so just let me know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> so you're on Tuesday leaving for Rhode Island. Yes. You're going to train full-time judo, wrestling, hopefully still some jujitsu. Yeah. We'll do jujitsu on Saturdays. And that team, we were talking about it today, that team still has no idea. I think, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but they have no idea. They think you're the full package. Like, you've got everything. Surprise, that... what do they find out that you're missing a bunch? <laughs> <laughs> but they have no idea what your skill set is as a coach. And I maybe even don't think they understand fully what your skill set is as a learner, which in my personal and not so humble opinion, has very much to do with not only your upbringing in our family, but also your upbringing in the SBG organization that we just have good training methods, which means that you grow up understanding critical thinking and how to learn and how to make yourself better. So given all that, what are you looking forward to? I can't wait for that feeling after you have a really hard practice and you're like training for a competition and you just feel dead you know like that sounds kind you of messed a, up yeah, it's super there's definitely up. something like not we went wrong right somewhere there. travis no but for real that, sounds right to me actually. No, <laughs> oh that God. feeling after a really hard <laughs> practice so when when i was over there uh for those three weeks we didn't have those really hard practices every day I had like maybe two, and it was awesome. I remember. It you, was awesome. You called me crying after the first one. No, I didn't. I don't cry. 
<laughs> I mean, you called me. Only in the shower, am I right, Dad? <laughs> I, you beat me to it. <laughs> then even you. That's don't one know of the life skills that I taught her. Yeah. <laughs> Normally, Stella cries in a pile outside of her shower. I don't go into her bathroom. Because you are sobbing in there and I'm trying to pour coffee. I don't. Well. So, Stella, you. So I'm looking must forward. have missed the memo. The reason you cry in the shower is so that you don't even know you're crying. Because the Turning water the runs shower on, your face. on and crying in front of the shower doesn't count. You need to get in there so you don't know what hot water is water and what hot water is tears, and therefore you're not crying. Well, sometimes you run out of hot water because you've been in there so long <laughs> that you have to turn the water off and sit outside. The shower. Your tears should be dried up by then. Okay, so back to what you're looking forward Anyways. to. Anyways. We don't need to rehash here. I don't cry, as I was saying. Okay. But I really, I like that feeling after hard practice when it feels like you gave it everything you you had. Mm -hmm. And I think it's those practices that are going to make me better and it's what I need right now. It's really, um, you know, anyone who says that, like, it's fun while it's happening is lying because right. it's not. It's <clears throat> rewarding afterwards. And that's one of my favorite feelings aside from winning <laughs> you know that's what gets you to the competition and it's, this year in particular has been difficult because we don't have those competitions I haven't competed since February and so almost a year yeah when you have a, one of those goals one of the, a very clear goal like winning a competition it makes those practices easier because you're preparing for something this year has been challenging because you don't have something to prepare for. There's a lot of unknown, and you kind of have to push yourself. And as much as I'd like to say that I have been pushing myself <clears throat> in the cardio circuits or um, lifting or even during rolls here, it's not the same as having someone on the mats with you who has the same goals, the same ambitions. And I think that that's what I'm going to get in this next chapter of my life. I'll be surrounded by the same athletes and um, coaches who like are all on the same page. So to be clear, your eventual goal is to represent the United States at the Olympics. Yes. First, I'm probably going to be a world champion, then the Olympics. Um, 2028 is going to be in the United States and the top two competitors in each weight division from the United States are in the Olympics. And you're 57 kilos? Yes. I mean, you compete at 57 kilos. I'm not 57 <laughs> kilos right now. I was gonna say. Ask me right before the tournament and I will be on weight. As you always are. Except for that one time in Florida when you were- We don't talk about Florida. <laughs> we don't, we don't talk, talk about Florida. <laughs> it wasn't just Florida. I remember a time in Washington where we got a, a little bit of a break. We got a little lucky. Remember that one? I feel like that was because you had the wrong parent on that trip. When was this? Don't you in remember Washington, that was the last Dad time I was you allowed to cut weight with you? You know, the brain is this amazing thing where... <laughs> you can block out bad memories. <laughs> yes, exactly. I think it will we do were, that I for you. I think we were on our third hot bath when you couldn't feel your hands. I feel like that's when I was that's drawing because, up divorce papers. That's because I have... Because you were abusing my child. Okay. My favorite daughter. I was well, helping her become a world champion. And he didn't put me in that bath. You put yourself in that bath. Yeah. Yeah, she was 16. I don't think I could have put her in the bath. And that would have been weird and Correct. awkward. <laughs> but what else Just you... turn on Grey's Anatomy, <laughs> Dad. <laughs> and then we, we went back to the hotel room and we were all bummed out and didn't think that one of the matches was going to happen. And then we got a call that night. And then you got to still do all your matches for that so event. So awesome. I don't remember this tournament. I really don't. Well, it happened. Your don't... hair looks really good. Did you get it done? Hey, thanks. Huh. I like the little topic Shout switch. Out. <laughs> I love the topic switch. Keep it coming. Speaking of which, I was missing a coach at comp team, the last kids comp team <laughs> on Thursday. Oops. Anyway, um, did you want to get a pedicure before you leave town too? I <gasps> thought you'd never ask. <laughs> okay, I'll schedule it for you. But do you want gel? Always. Okay. Are you going to be able to take it off though? I have gel on right okay, now. Okay, where's the part of this podcast where she tells the world 
how great we were at parenting oh, that that's, made her. That's the next part. Okay, so we talked about what you're looking forward to. So now you can talk about. I mean, this is the part that I'm here for. Amazing, Anyways, your parents are terrible. <laughs> Send help. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not really moving to Rhode Island. <laughs> I think that. Um, no, no, no. Let's be clear about this. Okay. <laughs> Put yourself into our shoes. And well, don't worry all, about I've, hurting your mom's feelings. If if it's mostly about me, it's going to be okay. Your mom's very tough. Mom, you and I both know that my feet are a half size bigger than yours. So I know. as much as I would love to be in your shoes, I can't do that because I'll stretch them out. <laughs> you <laughs> stretch them out. You've done that a few times. Yeah. You're welcome. I feel like now you, you do can, that on purpose with the vans that you now like. Now you can wear fuzzy socks in those shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for all the hand-me-downs, by the way. I have a bag of clothes for you. I know. I love that. <laughs> okay, back to back to you, Trav. You're a great dad. Anyways. <laughs> so what do you think? I, I know it might be kind of hard at the age of 19, but looking <laughs> back on your childhood... <laughs> not funny it is funny actually <laughs> it's not funny <laughs> why because i said hard at the age of <laughs> you guys are sickos <laughs> okay you said it i know it might be kind of challenging, <laughs> challenging at the age of 19. but looking back i mean what worked and what didn't work did you like it when i made you put your nose against the wall when i was Okay. Punishing you. Well, my brothers and I are not snitches, so even though we all knew it was baby Joe and we all had to stand in the corner and That's actually funny because Ricky blames you for being the mastermind. Did you know that? Came up at uh, Christmas Eve. Yeah, you were responsible for Joe and Ted almost drowning to death in the pond. Did you know that? According to Ricky. I didn't say skate to the middle of the pond. I said we should go ice skating. That would be fun. Weird. How come? You why even... were you on the banks of the pond while your brothers were drowning in the center of the pond? Were you trying to kill Ted oh and Joe? God. I didn't tell them to skate to the middle of the pond. Ricky and I were just cruising along the edge. Do you like how she pulls Ricky into that? Mm -hmm. Because he was. Woommates, stay side by side. Uh, okay. Apparently not, because Ricky's the one who told this story. He threw you under a big bus. What a snitch. Oy, I oughta. He gets no credit for the other things we did then, like knocking over the plant. That was amazing. That Twice. Was... <laughs> no biggie. <laughs> <laughs> you guys were like seven months old when you did that. Okay, what about the last... <clears throat> I'm I'm more interested in, you know, the podcast is about you moving to Rhode Island, hoping to make the Olympics, becoming a world champion. People keep trying to give your dad and I credit for all this, and we don't feel like we deserve much, if any, of that credit. Why not? Well, because what what you what? absolutely do. The way that you raised us was in such a way that everything we do falls back on us. I didn't ever feel like you um, gave us um, punishments for actions. It was more like, okay, well, you and I both know what's gonna happen if you decide to stay up late on your phone instead of sleeping for the next day. Like, you're gonna be tired and you're not gonna do well in school. Okay, stay up if you wanna stay up. Uh, there were punishments sometimes when we were younger. Obviously, you can't just let a five-year-old five or seven-year-old not eat their vegetables. Or um, drown their siblings. Right, but <laughs> that's a different story, okay? <laughs> um, but I feel like the other big part of it, um, aside from allowing us to make our own mistakes, uh, was that you guys were just fantastic role models yourselves. Mm -hmm. I've rewatched and listened to, I don't know if you know this, and you probably don't need the extra... Um, I could well, boost that, but I'm going to give it to you anyways. Believe it or not, on the inside, I need it. Do you remember when you guys were preparing for Masters Worlds? You made that little pact that you and a bunch of other black belts in the organization were going to compete. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I loved that. And you did this podcast 
or something with SPG, you were at the Idaho gym. I know that because you were sitting in the little office, and I've rewatched that um, video about having discipline so many times. Like when I'm walking on the treadmill or getting ready for my day, and you just talk about um, all the sacrifices that you made and what it takes um, to get to that level. Because I can't always talk to you, but I think that you and mom have just made yourselves perfect role models without even knowing it. Are you going to cry? No, I don't cry. There's no shower in here, so please don't. (laughs) (laughs) Nice try, though. That's what I told myself when I walked in. I said, okay, don't cry. There's not a shower. (laughs) That's funny because I think when I, and I'll speak for myself on this, but... I would think you would agree when we're in the middle of it, when you're in the mud and you're trudging through and you're f- cussing under your breath or... We don't use those words. <laughs> well, your mom does. I do a lot. Sorry. Just go no, back sorry. to the beginning of this podcast. I don't feel like I'm a role model necessarily or let me take that back. I do my best. Exactly. But I often feel that my best falls far short of what I want to give you all as as my kids. No, exactly. And, and I feel like that all the time, but you... And maybe it's just the effort that you see that I'm putting forward. Maybe it's not actually the end result. Or maybe you don't even know all the details. You... Maybe you, you don't see me crying in the shower. <laughs> Funny, because we're always at your bathroom door. <laughs> so true. nice try. You're not at the bathroom door. You actually open the door. When you knock and I'm like, hey, I'm pooping. And you're like, yeah, anyway. And then you open the door you're and like, still yeah, have yeah. a conversation. We know, we don't care. <laughs> yeah, I know that's true because then I come into my bedroom. And I'm like, Stella, why are you in the bathroom pooping and talking to your mom? <laughs> well, because she's in the bathtub. Because I had to go to the bathroom and I also wanted to talk to mom. <laughs> the house has three. Two birds with one stone. Well, she wasn't going to be in the downstairs bathroom. <laughs> Uh, no. But. So that's it. That's interesting, though, to me. What that tells me is if I was to give advice to my younger self, my younger, like, 22-year-old self, not my 29-year-old self that I am today, I would say, hey, just keep trying to do the right thing. And whether or not the result is what you think it should be, your kids will see your effort and they will see that you're trying and they will see that you love them because... And maybe it's not just what you see, but it's what you feel. Like, you know I love you to the end of the earth. I know you love me when you Venmo me. <laughs> well, oh, funny, oh, no, funny, no, no, no. Mom doesn't, mom doesn't randomly give me money. Funny thing not about that mom. is, so the way that triangle works is you love your mom when she Venmos you money. And then I love your mom less when I look at the bank statement. I see all the Venmos. Except so all what, my Venmo what, what, what say groceries. You, what, what love, I learned how to tag them. I send them to feel, Sean your mom loses. and Dad, and I say, "Hey, don't worry about this twenty dollars. It's for groceries." But well, really, it goes to you. Maybe it would have been groceries if we were living with you, and it probably did get spent on groceries. I feel like we shouldn't have outed the secret. We probably shouldn't have. <laughs> no, but, we shouldn't. I mean, now I'm gonna have to start calling it like utility bill. I'm Venmoed <laughs> flat out electric for the utility bill. Okay, back to what great parents we are. <clears throat> You're not fake. Either. We're not fake. So no. you see our flaws. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you don't hide them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you're also starting your day crying? Me too. Cheers. <laughs> You want another cup of coffee? <laughs> me too. I think she's talking about me now. I think so too. So, so Dad, you wanted uh, you wanted more coffee, right? I was just going to start another pot. No, I didn't drink the rest. <laughs> Usually, I'm too busy sobbing to, to get <laughs> the, the words out. Or the sauna? Is that where he cries? Then the tears so, evaporate. I'm going to tell you something interesting, and your dad has no idea. I'm going to say this. He told me something the other day. He said that I was. And you correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm sure you will, because I'm sure I'll also be wrong. You said, he said, that I was very hard to live with. And at first I was like, well, there were a lot of things that went through my head when he first said that. But then what what he finally explained was that 
It was because I was never satisfied with what's happening now. And I like to think that I've I've put a lot of effort into gratitude. And you and I talk about this a lot. Like when you're having that anxiety attack, look around. Like what are the things that you can smell and taste and, and feel and all that? And then outside of that, there's a lot to be grateful for. Like even this hard time is – there's we can find some gratitude even in the hard times, right? <laughs> sorry, I keep saying hard. <laughs> I'm sorry, you keep laughing too. But you just said but. <laughs> Come on, get it together. Therefore, <clears throat> his point that he eventually explained was that there's always something more that we can do. And there's always some we can we can strive to be a just one percent better every day okay that was fine i would like to change this little bit of it what's next what's next what's next what's next and i see that in you and you and i have had many conversations about this because i think as a parent it can also go the wrong way where you what i never wanted to do was set up a scenario where you felt like you were never enough and that you held yourself to such a high standard that you could never achieve because it's impossible and unrealistic and even undesirable. But you struggled with that. You struggled with perfectionism. You've struggled with, um, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be a full-time straight-A student and I'm gonna be you know, a, a world-class athlete and, 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 and nobody can do all that on four hours of sleep. That's the kicker. For more than like three days in a row. Yeah, there's not enough time. No. There's never enough time. I feel a little bit responsible for putting that um, mindset into your life. And I think probably some of it also was just how you're wired, which is mostly your dad's genetics, obviously. Oh, I'm sorry that we want to be amazing at everything we try. <laughs> but tell me, I mean, you. I, I, I guess what I'm saying is it's, it would be difficult to go back and say, oh, well, clearly when my mom said this or did this or my dad said this or did this, that made me feel like I had to be perfect all the time and strive to be 100% all the time. I, I'm not asking you to say that. What I am <clears throat> asking you is actually on the other side of that, no, you, you taught me how to calm down because I will or I would and still do um, as much as I can to constantly be improving, becoming the best version of myself, that 1%. That is something intrinsically that I think that I'll probably do for the rest of my life, no matter what area. But what you did for me was teach me how to balance that and maintain sanity um, what did I say that made you learn that? No, you you said that you have to balance emotionally, um, mentally, and physically. <clears throat> and so then sometimes, well, so then I would pull out my little whiteboard. I don't know if you knew this. <laughs> then after you left, you were like, okay, are you balanced right now? I was like, no. <laughs> Let me take a shower and come back. <laughs> and then I would write out, what am I doing right now to maintain good physical health? okay, clearly I'm in good physical health because I'm working out and I'm eating good foods, but maybe not so much because I'm not sleeping. And by not sleeping... And we're I mean talking about your enough. high school years. Right. In a little bit middle school, maybe eighth grade. And then I would think about what things am I doing to help flourish mentally. Like, okay, I'm doing well in school, or maybe maybe that's what wasn't doing well, but... School you're putting effort into it, right. at least. Putting Whether the result it. is what you want it to be, you're putting effort into it. And then uh, socially as well. And that one I would usually have to focus on too because I'm like, oh, it turns out the only social ra social interaction I'm getting is at school and at the gym, but I'm not hanging out with friends outside of those areas mm -hmm. or I'm not coming down for dinner. Or going out on a date. Shut up. <laughs> we don't talk about that. No, we don't. Boys? Who? Never heard of them. Next question. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> You're supposed to switch the topic. Go, go, go. He's thinking. He's 
fucking sorry. sorry your eyelashes look good too hey thanks <laughs> nope Mm-mm. no anyways so whiteboards love whiteboards what's your favorite color or marker um it actually that depends i man i don't really want to know the answer to that yes. let's go back to what we were have, talking I have about before markers okay so no so you taught me how to balance and how to take a step back and like look at and you started meditating too yeah and that was helpful Yes. What was helpful about that? Because this came up last night at dinner. Mm-hmm. Um, I am, I've always been very routine oriented too. Everyone knows that. Mm-hmm. We love routines. Yeah. He has his sauna. <clears throat> I like to meditate. Um, you can do both. Yeah. You don't, do you, um, I think you meditate in the, in the sauna. I, I like to I, think I that. I did for a while. When I was getting ready for Masters Worlds, I was using that app on my phone in the sauna. Yeah. It's pace. It's fantastic. It's a great way to start your day. I think that um, being able to just take like a couple minutes, because some mornings I would adjust the time. Be like, okay, I only have five minutes. Right. But when you think about it, like five It's five minutes. minutes. Anybody yeah. can get five minutes. Anyone can do that. Some and days I would do 10 minutes and it felt like nothing. But it's a night and day difference when you do it and you don't do it. Yeah. Because then you think about it the rest of the day. You're like, oh, I didn't meditate. That's why I'm having a rough day. Like you'll kind of use, if you get out of routine, you'll use it as an excuse for why you're not having a good day. Is that good or bad? I would. would. Is that good or bad? Bad. That you use it as an excuse? Yeah. I mean, it probably is why. I'm confused. Me as well. Would you like to meditate? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so I really forgot what we were talking about. <laughs> Genuinely forgot. I think you That's were trying to in you. articulate all of the great things that we did for you as a child right. that made you a great young adult. So <laughs> I don't know why, but I just remember jamming my fingers trying to play catch with you guys. Do you remember I would go inside like every 30 minutes, like, oh, different finger. Um, that was really random, but that came out of nowhere. You, what does that have to do with you, this I don't being? Know. You guys, I don't know. You, I remember uh, there's a one of my favorite pictures of, <laughs> of you guys was uh, after your very first jujitsu tournament oh in Oregon. Oh, my goodness. You were so proud of your medal when you're holding that medal up. And Ricky and Joe are in the picture, too. And J- Joe wasn't even training yet, which is funny. <laughs> no, but he was on the podium. He was like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> let's go. He's like, oh, we're standing on things? I'll stand on the thing. <laughs> I mean, do you think, um, and now I'm kind of curious about the question myself, because um, looking back at, you know, not just your um, childhood, but you know, your brothers as well. You guys pretty much from about the time you were five, actually in Joe's case, four, um, were, you know, taking road trips three or four times a month minimum, um, being kind of drug all over the Northwest and sometimes to Las Vegas or even California. Um, And so competing ended up whether you guys wanted it to be or not. And so I'm not, I'm not, saying that uh, it was good or bad but I'm just curious um, because I you know I, th- I, I I think back to all the weekends that we spent as a family staying in hotels and going and spending whole days sometimes two days at a jujitsu tournament whether you know whether you guys competed for you know 30 minutes that day you were kind of stuck in these gymnasiums and stuff and we didn't spend a lot snacks. of weekends <laughs> snacks. Lots, as, as, like lots of snacks as a as a as a family like you guys didn't you guys didn't have like what would maybe i think back on it and it's like man did did i screw up did did your mom and i did we make the right decisions as far as you know dragging you guys along through that whole process because you know you guys weren't obviously the only competitors and so um, I think of all the weekends that you guys spent with the other competitors and then at those tournaments and in those hotels and, 
you know, what kind of an impact did those, you know, nine, 10 hour car rides and, and, you know, as a, from a kid's perspective, I would look at that and go, man, did I cheat them out of like, you know, trips to the beach or trips to the lake or going to Disneyland or, or just riding around in the neighborhood on their bikes. Yeah. Or just, you know, we still had those times though. We didn't, we've never been to Disneyland. So. Well, no. And we won't go. We might. We won't. Do, we might. Do you want to go to Disneyland, mom? I'll do whatever the hell I want to do. Oh, sick. Your mom does whatever she wants, but. <laughs> That's by accident. Um, she actually says it differently, but this is the PG Growing Gorillas format. No, those weekends were the best. I don't. So I just wonder, but I mean, do you, do you. Was that, without, how was that helpful for you? I think it was helpful for you. I think your dad also thinks it was yeah, helpful. Yeah, and I'm not, tr- I don't want to be like. <clears throat> ask leading questions but obviously I, I feel guess. like well I I am because I, I I'm I'm looking at like your guys's upbringing and how your mom and I raised you guys and took care of you your and, mom. and uh, <laughs> I'm just I'm looking at things that stand out in my mind that might be unique or different from like the majority of um parents because if if your mom phrased the question originally that she has people come up to her (coughs) and talk about what a great job we've done with you or what a great job we've done with ricky or joe or ted or or any one of you and then if your mom and i both don't know what it was and we both feel like well that's so funny to me (laughs) which part that you guys don't understand why you're good parents uh so I guess this is where we tell her the big secret. You're adopted. No, oh. that's not the secret. Oh. I don't think that would have changed anything, actually. But. We have no idea what we're doing. Mm-hmm. None. Mostly it was just a blur for me. I was. I think we were just trying to figure it out you as we go. You try to do the right thing on, in every given minute, but there's never really a big... There's no, there's no, number one, there's no instruction manual. Number two, there's a lot of things that they tell you are going to be all right that in the moment are actually not all right. And you have a hard time figuring out. The way that she says number one and then number two reminds me of like why we shouldn't do something like number one, it's not safe. (laughs) Number two. It's going to make a mess. Number three, are you going to clean that mess? No, I'm going to clean that mess. Yeah, I just got so a little bit of a get your little butts flashback. back in the house. Yeah, I don't like when you use that tone. Can you use a different tone when you start listing things? <laughs> okay. <gasps> Makes me feel like Should I'm I in sing trouble. In, should I sing instead? Oh, I hated being in trouble. I don't get in trouble. Mm. Anyway. Pin okay, on. so Pin it on speak me. to your father's question. Yeah, those weekends were the best. I didn't, um, I never got sick of them. Honestly, it felt like we could do so many things in one weekend. Like we would get to have our road trip and on the road trip you could watch some movies or- um, Swim in the pool at the hotel. Oh my gosh, the pool. So that was a separate part too, is we would have time in the pool, burn our eyes with the chlorine most of the time, but, and then there would be competing and driving home. And there was just like, it was never only jujitsu. It was, oh, and you're going out to eat, too. And you were hanging out with your teammates and yeah, other families teammates. and well, I, different restaurants. And you learned good table manners. Oh, my gosh. I can't even tell you how many times, how many restaurants, how many airplanes. Yeah, you always made us order for ourselves. It was never like, oh, and she'll have that. No, it was, okay, you're next. <laughs> uh, uh, can I have a quesadilla, please? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Please and thank you. Yeah, I, I would I, kick you. You'd under look the at table. us across the table. I think a lot of the independence <laughs> came from from those trips and the hotels and just learning how to I travel so and and take care and of and be yourself. part of a larger oh, society. If you got to be in charge of the room key, of one of the room keys. That was a big deal. So I don't know if that was on purpose or not. It but was. But I sure. always had a room key. <laughs> that was on accident then. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it we did we did learn a lot of responsibility. I think that growing up in a lot of ways we were able to be kids and have fun and enjoy ourselves and play and you know make mistakes and but at the same time I think that you guys always understood that you were preparing us for adulthood right 
that's the plan. Here, Stella, when you live on your own, you're going to have to balance things yourself because there's not going to be someone watching. Or your seeing... mom will just Venmo you more money. <laughs> okay, so maybe financially, I'm still learning, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but you were just preparing us to be on our own. 100%. Right? Yeah. My, as, um, as the mother of two-year-old Stella, seven-year-old Stella, 10-year-old Stella, 15, 17, et cetera, et cetera, my thought was always, oh my God, what are the steps that I need to take to make sure that at 19, 20, 30, 70, she, she has what she needs to be able to handle life? Right. And at the same time, we also always know that if there's something we don't know how to do yet, like I'll just call you. And most of the time my call gets declined, so then I'll call dad. Because <laughs> I take the call every yeah. time. I'm like, okay, I'm very busy. what information are they going to ask me? for this doctor's appointment. And you're like, oh, I don't know. Let's see what happens. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been having conversations about you going to Rhode Island. And one thing that... Did you know I called the bank the other day? <laughs> as you should. And you called Les Schwab today? Yes, I did. Yeah, you did good stuff. No biggie. Hashtag adulting. But one thing that I want you to know is that I have 100% confidence and your, not only your smarticles, but also- <clears throat> Those are non-existent. I also feel very confident in your ability to think critically, in your resilience, in your passion for life and for living and for joy and for um, just making sure that you go big or go home and at the end of the day you know my phone number and do you have it memorized yet don't please, say it on please i don't want i don't need it i also have on. dad's number memorized by the way oh tee -hee. Tee -hee. is your number eight seven six five three oh nine <laughs> are those the numbers for the song yeah mm -hmm. I sing it different every time. <laughs> eight, six, seven, five. Oh, three, see, that's it. Nine. Is that it? Yeah, Are those six, seven, five, three, oh, nine. That's what I just said. Really? Jenny. But my name's not Jenny. That's your other girlfriend. Oh, my bad. It's the Rolodex. <laughs> Got me again. Don't we have a going away party yeah, for Stella? Yeah, we do. We have to go right now. Um, Stella, I love you. You're, you are everything I ever hoped for and a baby girl. Oh man, where's the shower? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need a shower after this. <laughs> I didn't. I'm, I didn't know that it was good. We had. We were like signing off with like. Me either. You don't have to. I just did, because I go big or I go home. And right mm. now I'm gonna go eat pizza and drink a beer. Hmm. Love you. Love you too, Stella. <laughs> um, that's a good time for you to tell us that you love us I know <laughs> <Just> <laughs> no I love you guys too couldn't I couldn't ask for better parents honestly. I mean you could but we're if you really if with. you really love me you'll win a gold medal for America oh would you stop <laughs> and You're me such an ass. and me too well I'll be like Joe on the podium with you <laughs> are we stepping on things now <laughs> No, that would be so funny. What if I just like go over to the podium like, come on, dad. I, I might be in a walker, but I'll try to he make just it like, up there. <laughs> walks over. We are very proud of you. And where you are today might have a little bit to do with how we raised you, but mostly it has to do with what you decided to do with your circumstances and your talents. And choices matter. Absolutely. So good job, sis. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. If you want more information about the Growing Gorillas Martial Arts Program for kids, please visit growinggorillas.com. And if you're interested in finding an SBG near you in the state of Montana, please visit us at sbgmontana.com. See you soon. Stay cold, Pony Boy. Peace out, Girl Scout. Catch you on the flip-flop. Catch you on the flipper, dipper. After a while, crocodile. I don't know anymore. <laughs> See you later, alligator. <laughs>